that matter right away. In Jesus' name. Amen? So David said, Amen. For the sake of this, I will always say, Peace be within you. He went on to verse, four, verse 9 and he said, For the sake of the house, Bethel, of our God, I will seek, inquire, and require your good. He said, In order for the house of God to keep flourishing and being at peace, I will seek the Lord of what? Peace. Sometimes we want the church to flourish. But you won't seek the Lord. For the sake of the Lord church, you should be seeking God. You should be coming to Bethel. For the sake of your brethren, you should be conferring peace upon them. You should remind them that they have peace. And for those that are outside of the Lord, Christ say any house, you should still give them what? Peace. peace. Both for the brethren, your companions, and those what? Away from you. Hallelujah. We're going to come right back to this. I think it's um, what a Luke. I think it's Luke 9. No, I think it's 4 or 5. Give me a second. I'll give it to you. Actually, we'll lose this one. Luke 10. Luke 10 from verse 5. Luke chapter 10. Verse 5 to 7. Now this is the church. These are those who have peace within them. The Bible reads, Thank you, Jesus. Whatever house you enter first say, what the first thing you say as soon as you enter? Peace be to this household. You say, wheresoever you go, the first utterance should come out of your mouth is what? Peace, Peace be here. You are the authorized amen, body of Christ. You are the agent. If you release peace in that place, there is peace. And if you do not, there is no peace unless somebody else do it. So the Bible said, wheresoever you will go, amen, Whatever house you enter, first, the first principle you're supposed to release in that place is what? Peace. It's why sometimes we come to a place, we come to a people, and we can't have peace, etc. Because you did not release the peace that you have within you. He said the first thing you are to say, amen, peace be to this household, the whole household, amen. Freedom from all the distress that result, amen. From sin, be with this family. All the stress in life, you know where it comes from? Sin, you're missing the mark. The Bible says all the suffering and the struggle we go through psychologically, emotionally, physically, family, internally, spiritually, is because of what? Sin, you're missing, wrongdoing. It says you're approaching the process, you're interplaying, you're standing representing wrong, you're misrepresenting. This was sin. You're missing the proper way to be, to think, to speak, to do. And the Bible said this will always create distress. It's a form of disease. Amen? Things that had a, I'll say it different. The word disease comes from things that had a, amen? A, it's not in an easy flow. It's in a, amen? It's in a, it's in a, it's in a dysfunctional way. It's, a, it's not in, in ease, it's in this easy way. And it creates a dysfunction. So it's a, the first thing you are to do, it may say, peace be upon this house and the whole family. Because without, no, without peace, the whole family is going to be in what? Distress. It's a terrible way to live. It's not a way that brings the best out of you. When you are in a distressful way, stressed out, Fatigue, torment. The, amen? 
The best of you don't come forth. Not the best thoughts, not the best words, not the best expression. So the Bible said, first thing you must do is let peace rest upon that family and that household. To free them from all the distress. Verse 6 said, and if anyone worthy of the peace, if anyone is willing to accept it, and blessedness, amen, is there, the peace and blessedness you wish, who wish? You. You. You're the one with it. The peace and blessing that you release will what? Stay with them. Amen. Because you are Christ's representation. And Christ said, you belong to the kingdom of peace. I have given you a peace like not in the world. I have given you a peace that you can transform. The world might have peace, but they can't what? Transform it. But Christ said, you have the kind of peace that you can what? Give. So he said, the peace that you decide to be in this person, in this thing, in this family, in this atmosphere shall be there. This is why if we even come to Bethel and we soon as we see each other at the door, we've got peace be within you, we'll create an atmosphere full of what? Peace. This is why soon as we finish worship, in our greeting, we greet each other by walking around going, peace be within you, and peace be within you. Hallelujah. The Bible said, the peace that you wish shall come upon him. But if not, it shall come back to you. You should become sensitive to know when that house or that place, they don't want peace, they want war. Because the peace will return to you. You'll feel, I sent it out, but it what? It came back. You ever send an email and it bounced back? It will feel like that. Something you send an email and you got email failed. And all that means the person don't want no peace. They go, I don't want your peace. I want to stay angry. I remember listening to Sister Joy speak once. And her husband, Brother Dave, he absolutely knew the principle. And she said, I was upset and I wanted to stay upset. And they were doing grocery or something and she said, he go, Joyce, peace be with you. And he said, I want to believe you know. He go, well, you just want to be angry? Yes. <laughs> you know, so at this point, the person who want the peace to sue them or to permeate them, they want to stay miserable. So you should feel that peace that was released, what? Return. You should be sensitive like Jesus when it leaves, and you should be sensitive when it returns. Soon as the lady touched the M on Jesus' coat, he got power what? Left me. Soon as you released peace, you should go, peace just left me. Soon as it didn't come back, you should go, somebody accept that email. Hallelujah. You know, I don't know if all phone call, but my wife, I don't know, or iPhone, she can tell when someone got the message if they receive it. Do you understand this process here? Pastor Joe, the same kind of fool. But they can tell when the message they said has been what? Delivered. Received, delivered. Yes. Well, when you release peace, you should be able to tell when it was. Come, church. Can we learn church etiquette? See? Can we learn how we are to be in Bethel before the Lord? Religion is a whole lot of stuff of nothing to do with the actual effectiveness of the children of Zion. Amen? And Israel. Israel had responsibility to pray, amen, for the holy city. They had responsibility to come to the holy city to give what? Thanks. To pray for those and confer blessing upon those who pray for the city and prosperity. To confer peace upon each other and the companion. And to seek the Lord for the prosperity and the good. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, I will seek the Lord. I will seek the Lord. For the good of the church. For the good of the church. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So the peace that my sister confer on someone. If they receive it, it shall be as she said. The peace that Sister Gloria confer on someone, once they receive the mail, it shall stay. You have the ability to let someone that is distressed have peace just by your word. Amen. If you believe this, say amen. amen. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, when they came to the house of Bethel, you could see David understood these things. So in verse 1 of Psalm 122, David said, I am so happy when they go, let's go to Bethel. Amen? 
He said, I'm so happy to go see Father. I'm going to come for some peace on my companion, my brother. I'm going to seek the Lord for the good. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to show you some more things. So minimum, you might want to write those four things down. Go before the Lord to thank Him. Go to, amen. Go before the Lord to call for some blessing. Amen. Go before the Lord. Amen. So you can seek Him for the goodness of the house of the Lord. Amen. Go before the Lord to pray for those who pray for the Lord's will and the Lord's fear in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to show you, I love these Psalms because you could see the work of Brother David and those that understand effectively. Let's look, continue. So we, we look at Psalms 122. I want to look at Psalms 123 and 124 in Jesus' name. These are the things Satan don't want you able to be mindful of when you come to Bethel. So you are there, but you're not benefiting anybody. You're not seeking the Lord for the sake of the house of the Lord. You're not, you're not come to the Lord present to give thanks. You didn't come to confer a blessing. Minimum when you come to Bethel should be to give thanks to the Lord. Amen? Minimum. I've come, Lord, to your presence to give thanks. You should confer some peace on somebody. Hallelujah. Psalm 123. What was the last one? Pray for prosperity. Amen. Seek the Lord. Come to, come to, come to Bethel to give thanks. Give thanks, confer blessings, seek Him for the good of the host and good of the brethren. Yes, and pray for, pray for those that pray. Amen. For Bethel. Bless them. May they prosper. Seek. Give thanks, confer peace, seek God, and confer, amen, peace on those who are praying for Bethel. Let's look at Psalms 123, please. This is a prayer, amen. Psalm 123 and 124, David is praying. I love this praying. The Bible reads, Psalms 123, amen. Amen. Unto you do I lift up my eyes. Amen. You who are enthroned in heaven. So when David come to Bethel, he know God is in heaven. He says, come to lift up my eyes to you. Now let's see why he's lifting up his eyes. True prayer to the Lord. He said, behold, as the eyes of a servant look to the hands of their master, and as the eyes of a maid to the hands of our mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord our God until he has mercy and loving kindness to us. There we go. I don't stop looking to God until he gives me mercy and express loving what? Kindness. You see, when you come to Bethel, you come to pray. You ain't come for social life. You know, I'm going to bless somebody today because I'm going to keep looking to heaven where God is enthroned. This is why Jesus teaching the Lord prayed. He said, say, our Father who art in heaven. So when I come to Bethel, my eyes is upon heaven and I'm going to keep seeking him for mercy or loving kindness for me or somebody or for his house. You see, are you beginning to understand why your mind needs to be present when you're in Bethel? If that you are just a body there and you can't help nobody. It's participatory. It's yes. Not, it's not spectator. Perfect. Religion is spectating. Yes. But you exercising your faith. Is yes. Exercise. It's participatory. Yes. You have come to set your eyes. It's why in Colossians 3 verse 1 and 2 it says, Set your heart on the mind and things above. I've come to seek mercy for myself or somebody. I've come to get loving kindness for somebody or myself or your house. But I just don't show up to Bethel to socialize. This is why my mind needs to be present in Bethel. My eyes is upon the Lord, our Father who art in heaven. I know His name is holy because I am about to seek mercy. I need help or loving kindness. This is why the Bible says you live by faith. You live Amen. As one who eyes is always towards what? Heaven. One of the reasons we get caught up so much in the world, your eyes is too horizontal and not enough vertical. 
Local. You're localized. Amen? And that's where you're centralized. Amen? Instead, you, uh, let's think of it, it's like you should be international. Mm -hmm. You should be global, not localized. Your eyes should be towards heaven. And David said, I am going to keep focusing. Amen? My eyes there, look to the Lord our God until David said, this doesn't stop until I have mercy or loving kindness. Mm -hmm. You will either need mercy, help for something, or somebody you know that need it. I was talking to my sister Jane this morning as we get ready to worship, and there's certain things that bother in her heart that she come to Bethel to the Lord. I, I ain't going to stop till you extend mercy in these areas that I'm looking for to get mercy. I ain't going to stop till you show loving kindness to these areas that I'm seeking loving kindness. Bethel is a place for mindfulness. Bethel is a place for work. Bethel is a place we get excited because we say, those that are mindful are going to work. Those that have been charged to give thanks are going to give thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 3 said, have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on and loving kindness for us. For we are exceedingly situated with contempt. You know, we're in a bad situation. Amen? We're in a bad situation. Have mercy on us. Something you might hear someone in Bethlehem, and all you are in your prayer, the only thing you're, you're in your prayer, have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. They won't stop till they get mercy. Christ said, ask and keep on what? Asking. Asking. He said, knock and keep on. See. He said, you don't stop till you what? Get it. He said, remember this. Which father, if the child, children, ask them for bread, will give a snake? Or do you think if you ask God for bread, he will give you a stone? Never. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Verse 4 said, our life is exceedingly filled with the scorning and the scoffing of those who are at ease. Amen? And with the contempt of the proud, irres irresponsible tyrant who disregards the laws of God. They don't care what people, they don't care about having mercy and other what? People. You see, one of the things you'll find when you're communion and, is, and you've been regenerated, God make you care about a lot of other people. You don't just don't pray for mercy for you. You don't just seek love and kindness for you. You seek it for everyone that you come in contact with. Hallelujah. You don't just be like, be at ease and disregard what? Other people. Chapter 24. There's a few verses there. The, amen. The, Brother David is praying again. Hallelujah. Do a couple more. Are we there? Mm -hmm. It reads, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, if we didn't have the Lord on our side, you know what the enemy, you won't even be here today. <laughs> oh, you yourself, can't stop sinning, and sin brings what? Okay. Distress. You'll be so stressed in your mind, in your spirit, in your soul, in your body. Amen? So in an uneasy state. Amen? Unrest. If it had not been for the Lord, he said, let Israel say, if it was not been for the Lord. When people come against us, verse 3 said, then they would have quickly swallowed us up alive when their wrath had kindled against us. Amen? Then the waters would have overwhelmed us and swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us. Then the proud waters would have gone over us. Blessed be the Lord, amen, who has not given us up as prey to their teeth. There's some waters coming in life, some storm. It's coming so fast, the unfolding of certain events and things. When these waters come, if it had not been for the Lord to raise up a standard that the water take flight, you would be finished. This is why when you come to Bethel, you have come to give thanks. Hmm. One of the reasons you're experiencing peace that the Lord gives you, 
And now the distress of sin is because the Lord has lifted up a standard that the waters can't get to you. The waters can't overwhelm you. This is why the Bible says, if it has not been for the Lord, let Israel say, let the church of Zion say, if it had not been for the Lord. I think my sister testified this couple of weeks. She goes, if it had not been for the Lord, when the waters come against me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hallelujah. Verse 7 says, we are like a bird escaped from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. If it had not been for the Lord, I know I wouldn't have been here today. Jesus. Not just alive, spirit regenerated, focused, function, can appreciate the Lord and my life and my brothers and sisters and able to say, peace be within you. Amen. If it had not been from the Lord. You know, sometimes I look back and say, Lord, you have, you have brought me from far. From far and still moving me on. Amen. Hallelujah. Man needs the endurance within you. Yes. Tell somebody if it had not been for the Lord. If it had not been for the Lord. The waters would have overwhelmed me. The waters, the waters would have overwhelmed Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, Bethel is the place you come to give thanks. You come to say, Lord, thank you. You have kept the waters of the proud away from me. You have kept me from the snare of the enemy. Satan is always setting a trap to finish you off. Yep. He hates when you go to Bethel. Mm. He hates when you give thanks. He hates when you pray for the prosperity of Bethel. He hates when you confer peace upon us. He hates when you seek the Lord for the good of the house of the Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. But for the Lord name's sake, he can't get past. This is why he so wanted to attack Job that when God told him about Job, he got, you think Job prays you and come to Bethel for no reason? You have an edge around him, I can't break through. Mm. If not, I don't want and desire him. This is why Christ tells Peter, Simon, Simon, the devil have asked repeatedly, can I have them? Can I sift them like sand? He's always asking, can I have mama? Can I have Jackie? Can I have the church? He's waiting for the weak moment. Hallelujah. If it had not been for the Lord. Go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25. This is why the command the Lord gave upon the church. Hebrews chapter 10 verse verse what? Uh, we're going to go from verse 24 to 25, 24, 25. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25 reads, <clears throat> And let us consider and give attentive, amen, amen, continuous care to watch over one another. It is your responsibility to the Spirit of the Lord to be attentive, watching at your brothers and sisters, making sure that all the blessings the Lord has conferred upon them, stay with them. Because the enemy is constantly trying to what? Steal and kill. So the Bible said, Amen. And let us consider, meaning you need to con you, need, you need to contemplate, look at it. And let us consider and give attentive, continuous care to watch over one another. Studying how we may stir up, stimulate, and incite to love and helpful deeds and noble activities. You should be looking, how do I get them to Bethel? How do I get them to give thanks? Amen? How do I confer peace and get them to confer peace? How do I get them to pray, amen, for the work and the will of the Lord? How do I get them to seek the Lord for the work of the Lord? Glory. You should be constantly praying. 
When you see one of them, don't judge them. Pray that they'll be quickened. Pray that they'll become mindful before the presence of the Lord. Pray that they'll become mindful of their regeneration. Pray that they'll become mindful of all the equipping of God has equipped them to do His will. Pray that they'll become mindful of the body of Christ and the will of God. Hallelujah. The Bible said in verse 25, not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together. He said you must not neglect and forsake gathering together as believers as is the habit of some people. But, amen, but admonishing, warning, urging, and encouraging one another. And all the more, faithfully, as you see the day approaching. As time, and you know this, the time going to get worse is when you should be encouraging each other more. Amen? When you see a brother or sister, they haven't shown up in Bethel for a while, one of you should call them and say, I haven't seen you in the house of the Lord. I haven't seen you in the assembly lately. You know we have to come to Bethel to give thanks. You know we have to come for a blessing on each other. You know we have to be praying for Bethel. You know we have to be seeking the Lord for his good. Where are you? Come, come join this work with me. Come work with me. The church has been called God's fellow labor. You are to labor on the body. The work is in the body. The body has to be presented without any stain or what? Or wrinkle. Last week we looked at this. The body has to learn, as I said to Thessalonians chapter 5, how to be happy with their faith. The body has to learn, the Bible says, to be constant in prayer. And the body has to learn how to be thankful in what? All situations. When you see a brother and you realize they're not happy with it, remember, to be happy with your faith is to be de is to live in dependency, dependent on God, not independent. Trust. Dependent, trusted. So when you see a brother and a sister and you realize they don't know to depend on God, you, go, you see, try to pray and work with them until they learn to trust the Lord, depend on the Lord. When you see they're not constant in their prayer, you go, brother and sister, you don't know what to pray for? Okay. Amen? You have no one that needs peace come for upon them? There's no one you can, you see, there are two parts to it. One is acknowledgement and one is giving. For those who have peace already, you just, you just acknowledge, amen? Peace be within you. But Luke 10 is for those that don't what? Have peace. When you go to a place that they don't have peace, then you must what? Come forward upon them. Yeah. My sister has peace already, so the peace be within you. I just acknowledge. But when you meet an unbeliever, you must what? Confort peace. Hallelujah. The Bible said, do not be like those who neglect. Amen. Similar to Psalms 122, David said, I'm so happy when they said, let's go up to Jerusalem. I am so happy. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Here's a secret too. Jacob in... Genesis 35, God tell him, go up to Bethel and build an altar. Mm -hmm. We still have the same method, but it's different. God provides the altar. Jesus said, any place, two or three of you, gather in my name. I will be there to inhabit the praise. Yes. So the sacrifice of his praise, he said, I come to that place. The altar will be erect for me. Every time two or three of you come together, he said, I have an altar there to receive the sacrifice of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. I call that, amen, a mercy act. <laughs> you, go, you might even know how to erect an altar, but once two or three come together as a default, I'll be there. Amen. He said, I will be there. Yeah. Glory, hallelujah. Now, once we are there, we're just going to touch one more scripture today before I wrap up. In Jesus' name. Once we are there, hello, lovely boy. Amen. Let's see what happened. Go to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15 to 20. We're going to end there. Hebrews chapter 13, 
verse 15 to 20. Any place two or three, you see, so, you know, Sister Jane, let's say she didn't know, but thank God she knows. Let's say she didn't know what to do in Beth Health. You see? Christ said, once you come to Beth Health with Brother Charles, he goes, the altar, I'll be there to enough as a praise. You might not know you have to thank me there. That's why you should come here. Or you should be conferring peace or praying or seeking the Lord. But you go, because you were two of you have come, I'm there. Um. <laughs> I call it the default method. Just just because. You got because two of you did not neglect. Come together. I am there. Look at somebody and say, I need you because I need the Lord to appear. I need you because I need the Lord to appear. Say, you need me. You need me. Because we need the Lord to appear. Because we need the Lord to appear. So you are important to me. You are important to me. And if we are going to survive. We must not neglect. We must not neglect. Gathering together. So the Lord can appear. In Jesus' name. We need each other. We need each other. You are important to each other. We need each other. Amen. You see, the Lord didn't want none of us to get proud. Because if not, you know, because you know how to come to Bethel, and because you know how to pray for Bethel, and because you know how to confer blessing and seek the Lord, you might go, I don't need nobody. No, 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 no. You go, when two of you come together, I am there. Yes, you come to do those things, but I'd rather you do it as a body. Amen. 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 So you go, there's a bonus. Every time you come together, I'm going to come to you now with the praise. Jesus probably could do it all by himself, but he goes, no, no, no. I want to gather the brethren to do it with me. See, you get 12 disciples immediately. Sis, I need you. Brother Charles, I need you, my brother. Sister Jane, I need you. Mama, I need you. Pastor Chow, I need you. The body of Christ through the ramps. I need you. Sister Glow, I need you. Hallelujah. Part of effectiveness. Is having your brother and sister there. Amen. Because sooner or later sometimes. It's not you don't have peace. But sometimes the waters is coming in so fast. I can't see. So I need brother Charles to remind me. Brother peace be with you. In you. Because the water. As David said if it wasn't for God. Israel said if it wasn't for the Lord. So I need somebody to go. Peace be with you. Just reset me. Do you understand me? Just reset me. Amen? In the, and there's somebody out there waiting who is in distress because of sin. Is waiting for you to say, peace be what? Upon you and your whole house. Oh. Okay. Hallelujah. Believe me. The Bible says all of us, the church, judgment begin in the church. Do you know what you're going to answer for? Why didn't you think for the Bible? All these people that were so distressed because of sin. You, not once you could have conformed the peace, he said, and he said, and what you wish would have happened. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, not once you could have said, acknowledge, peace be within you. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. Not once you wanted to come mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. to give thanks, to pray for the body of Christ, to seek the Lord for the body. You might, you know, I've told you this many times, God has been good to me. There's not much I have to seek Him for personally. He has this way of taking care of my needs before I can get there. But I seek Him a lot for what? Others. Others. Amen. Glory. This one, He doesn't let me get away with. Yes. He goes, I got you. But you are going to do my bidding. And He will respond. I stole you under my son. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Amen. I know my brother a long time. I don't think as much he prays for, for himself. But he spent a lot of time praying for other people. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. God of sanctified, not a man interested in much personally. Mm -hmm. But the people that he know, oh, oh, he is before the Lord. Oh, he is before the altar. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Last scripture. Are we at Hebrews 13, 15 to 20? 